Well, as promised and advertised, joining us now is Larry Kudlow, White House top economic guy. That's his title. Uh, <laughs> uh, Larry, President Trump says there will be a new payment of 1200 bucks, or at least something like that. Is this going to happen before the election? How vital is it to get more money out to the people who need it at this stage of the recovery? Well, I think it's certainly on the table, and I think it could be very important. We're looking at a lot of different options. Mm -hmm. It's all pre-decisional. The uh, president has said he wants it to be smart and effective. Uh, my guess is it has to be uh, more targeted than the uh, prior approach to the direct checks. And it's not the mm -hmm. only policy. I mean, you know, w we may extend. I mean, there's already an extension of the PPP, which was so important to these uh, successful jobs numbers. We're looking at a payroll tax holiday uh, for the workforce. We may look at cap gains. We may look at business deductions for uh, restaurants, various entertainments, baseball games, sightseeing and tourism. We certainly want to restrict uh, some COVID-19 liabilities for businesses. So it's a large scale package and uh, direct checks are probably going to be part of them as far as the president is concerned right now. Uh, you know, the president pointed out uh, in the last two months we have 7.5 million jobs created. That's very impressive. Where, where does that put us in the recovery, though? Well, look, um, a lot of people thought we'd, we'd have as many as 30 million jobs lost. Uh, we never really mm -hmm. got higher than, I guess, 20, 21 million. Right now we've uh, cut that down to a um, little less than 15 million. So we've probably covered at least half of the expectations. We have more work to do, I get that. There's still a lot of hardship. There's still a lot of heartbreak out there. I understand that. But again, I, I think these, you know, almost eight million jobs in the last two months, um, it's pretty much spread across the board. I was looking at the um, different cohort groups. Uh, African-American mm. jobs up 400,000 in June. That's after plus 300,000 in May. Uh, Hispanics up 1.5 million. That's a huge number. And uh, another majority group, that is to say women, they jumped uh, in their jobs by 3 million in the month of June. So yeah. those are very, very big numbers. And I think there's a lot of momentum here. Look, I understand, you know, you've got your hot spots in the Southwest. It's not a second uh, round. Mm -hmm. It's just the continuation of the, of the existing virus that moves south and west. We're on it. We're sending teams down there to monitor that. And we are emphasizing, as the president did this morning and yesterday, we are emphasizing the best practices. The masks work in these uh, hot spot areas. You've got to have a lot of testing. You've got to keep up the social uh, distancing. You've got to have personal mm -hmm. hygiene. Those are effective mitigations that help the rest of the country. I mean, the numbers are still, in the aggregate, uh, very low, particularly fatalities, for example. Let's do it again in these hot spots, and we can uh, basically conquer them. Uh, but do those mitigations, those pauses, if you like, in the reopening phases, uh, especially in the Southwest, does that do anything to the V-shaped recovery, Larry? Does it kind of drag it out a little bit? Well, I don't know. Uh, at the moment, the answer is no. But the next couple of weeks will be very instructive. We are scouring and monitoring every number, uh, particularly real-time high-frequency numbers to see. So we're looking at it very, very carefully. Uh, I hate to make predictions on that. I will say this, so far, you know, really almost daily things like the Apple Mobility Index. Uh, I saw the Dallas Fed's manufacturing report, right, Dallas, Texas, which is clearly a hot spot. Uh, that's done extremely well th through the end of, uh, of June. Um, we're looking at better trucking, better housing, and of course retail sales were soaring. So we're going to try to follow everything, and we've sent teams down to these hot spots in Florida, Arizona, Texas, uh, California, and a few other places. Um, the next few weeks will tell that story, and we'll be watching carefully. We spoke to an economist earlier this morning, Larry, who says getting back to full employment is just not going to be possible because some industries have been permanently contracted. Do you, do you agree with that? And, uh, and there's obviously, if that's true, there's nothing you can do about it. I'm not sure what that means, permanently contracted. I mean, America, with its free market economy, remember, President Trump cycled policies mm. of low taxes, 
uh, major reductions in burdensome regulations, opening up energy, and better uh, trade deals, more reciprocal trade deals. Let's not forget USMCA went into effect yesterday. That is going to be hugely right. positive for the U.S. economy. Um, you know, these private sector companies are the most innovative, inventive, entrepreneurial people. We work with them constantly to deal with the pandemic. We have, you know, shared this uh, with the private sector people. So I think that people who are somehow the economy is going to stop and die as long as we keep a free economy going, as long as uh, as we uh, keep to our right policies. I mean, I'm hearing other people on the other side of the aisle talk about major tax increases to roll back the Trump tax cuts, uh, right. to roll back the regulations for a government takeover of health care, uh, for a Green New Deal that will absolutely destroy consumers and traveling and our leadership in natural gas and oil. I mean, there's some nutty things out there that if they come into place, it's going to be a disaster for the stock market and the economy. So if you let the economy stay free and you keep incentivizing work and investment and risk, then these industries will come back and there'll be new industries, Ashley, that neither of us can even predict right now. <laughs> I think you're right. Uh, just changing topics here, Larry. I want to talk about China. Secretary of State uh, Pompeo saying that uh, they want to restrict now some of the exports to Hong Kong, calling Hong Kong no longer autonomous from, from Beijing. Uh, do we have another confrontation facing us with China? Well, look, Secretary uh, Pompeo is right. Uh, National Security Director <laughs> O'Brien has made the same remarks. President's made the same remarks. Uh, we are very unhappy with China, and yes, there are going to be export restrictions, particularly with respect to military, national security, and some sensitive high technology, because that stuff's going to leak right into communist China on the mainland with the takeover of Hong Kong. So we are very unhappy with them. We are very unhappy with China's hacking uh, into our government and to our private corporations. They are not secure. That's why we're keeping Huawei and other Chinese phone companies out of our efforts to 5G, which I might add are, are roaring ahead uh, with tremendous advances in spectrum and software. So, yeah, it's a big problem. We are not in a good mood about China. The president said that repeatedly. If you're not in a good mood, does that spill over to the trade deal in, in general? Well, I'm in a good mood, Ashley. I just want to emphasize that. It's just the China problem <laughs> that we don't like. Will it spill over? At the moment, at the moment, we are engaged on the trade deal, phase one. Ambassador Lighthizer has mm -hmm. been reporting uh, as recently as yesterday. The economics team met uh, for over an hour with the president. And the trade deal is proceeding. This is a kind of complex relationship, you know. It operates on many different levels and many different tracks. Trade is working right now. We will see if they hold to their promises. I certainly hope they do. Uh, other aspects, uh, you know, the China virus and uh, the lack of transparency and reporting, very bad. Uh, the Hong Kong story, very bad. The human rights Uyghur story, very bad. I mean, look at taking Hong Kong's f uh, freedom away is a global event. It is sending a message that China cannot be trusted that China is not, never going to be a free country. It moves in exactly the wrong direction. And, you know, we're going to have a G7 meeting uh, later in the summer here mm -hmm. in Washington, D.C., and the China story is going to be front and center because it's not just us. Europeans are displeased. Canadians are displeased. Indians and Japanese are very displeased. So we'll be talking about that for quite some time. All right. Well, I'll leave it there. I believe you. I think you are in a good mood, and you have to be in a good mood after that June's job report, Larry Kudlow. June uh, jobs. Congratulations July on 4th, that. July 4th weekend, Ashley. Let's celebrate America, you know? Let's celebrate the greatest we country in the history of history. I am. Amen to that. I'm right there with you. Larry Kudlow, White House Chief Economic Advisor. Larry, as always, thank you very much. Appreciate you. that.